Hey everyone, welcome back to Bleach Brave Souls, and today I wanted to talk about the manga characters yet again. Now that we have all 14 manga characters in the game, I just wanted to do a wrap-up video giving my thoughts on how the whole process went and how they turned out. About a year ago, K-Lab announced that they would be dipping into the final arc of Bleach to create new characters for the game. And this was kind of a big deal because those specific characters had never been put into any other form of media besides the manga itself. Uh, at that time, people were asking questions like, you know, this game, it's going to run out of characters, so what are they going to do about it? Are they going to go into the manga? And K-Lab did eventually announce that they would be going into the manga, at least for these 14 characters. The fact that there was only 14 kind of, kind of bummed people out because, you know, uh, there's so many characters from that Thousand Year Blood War arc that people wanted to see, like the Quincy's, maybe the Zero Squad. Um, you know, just, uh, there's a ton of characters in the final arc of Bleach that they could have done. But uh, they only got the rights for 14, and they released them in four separate banners. Now that these banners are over, there's a lot of debate as to whether there will be more, and we're going to talk about all that stuff right now, guys. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I wanted to discuss was the character choices. Now there's a lot of people that are kind of happy with most of the character choices, but there's some specific characters that are very controversial. There are some characters such as the pink-haired Yachiru, because I do have to specify since there are technically two Yachirus in the game. She was a very controversial pick. Uh, the others I don't really have a problem with. And guys, before I go on, I want to state that this is mostly going to be just my opinion and my general thoughts. Uh, this is not, I'm not speaking for anyone else but myself in this video. So uh, with that out of the way, uh, the pink-haired Yachiru was a very controversial pick. Uh, she doesn't have a huge fan base. Uh, she's not one of the most popular characters, at least globally. I don't know about in Japan. Maybe in Japan she's very popular. And this is made by a company, this game is made by a company that primarily focuses on their Japanese market, as far as I can tell. So maybe the fact that she's popular in Japan is why she was put into the game. But as far as the story goes and all of that, she wasn't really uh, uh, one of the more crucial characters uh, to that particular Bleach arc. So when she was announced, everyone, pretty much everyone unilaterally was like, what, they wasted a, a manga spot on Yachiru? I can't believe this. You know, there's only 14 spots and she got one. I can't believe it. It's crazy. And uh, I still feel that way as well, guys. Um, I don't know about her pick. That could have been used for a different character that more people wanted. But, I mean, she did fit in with the theme of that banner, so I can't really argue on that point. But, you know, I, I have to think that, you know, maybe they don't really need to have a theme for these banners. Because the first banner, the first manga banner, uh, which had Byakuya, Sajin, Toshiro, and Shunsui, that didn't really have a theme either. So, um, you know, that, that kind of argument that she was there because she fit in with Kenpachi and Retsu, it's kind of valid, but at the same point, I don't know if it's 100% valid. Uh, other choices that I found kind of questionable, um, I'm going to try to be objective. I'm going to have to say Byakuya, and even though I love Byakuya, he's my favorite character in the entire series, he did not really do that much in the final arc either. Uh, he did have a small role in the battle against Gerard. He did have uh, a role in developing Rukia's character. But uh, other than that, he didn't really see that much action. And the action that he did see was kind of off screen, especially when he came back from the, the Royal Realm and was fighting some of the other Quincy's. Uh, so Byakuya might have been another questionable choice, but he is a fan favorite, so I can see why they put him in. Uh, Sajin also. Sajin is not one of the more popular captains or characters in the Bleach, or in the whole Bleach anime manga. But he did have a significant fight. He did have a cool new power-up. So uh, I can see that he might be one of the borderline characters they would have chosen. Other than that, the only other issue I have with the character choices is the decision to put in two Ichigos. Now this is a really polarizing topic. Um, a lot of people say it makes sense, but I think even more people say we didn't want two Ichigos. Uh, he is the main character though, so I mean, there's arguments for both sides. Uh, I kind of personally feel that they didn't need to do the, uh, the Shikai, uh, the dual sword, the dual wielding Ichigo, if they were going to do the final form, uh, final form hollow fused, whatever you want to call it, Horn of Salvation version. Uh, if you're going to do that final form, you didn't really need to do the one before that. I mean, I just think it's just too much Ichigo. And since there's only 14 slots, you know, you got to say, 
uh, give it to somebody else, in my opinion. So I wasn't that hype on it because it, it, they already have a lot of other Ichigos as well. They have the movie Ichigo, which is also a heart character. If you ask me, I would rather have had a different character to take up that slot. So in my opinion, everything's good. All the choices were good besides uh, Yachiru, pink haired Yachiru, uh, Sajin, the two Ichigos, they only needed one. Uh, Byakuya was also questionable. And to be honest, guys, uh, Retsu, uh, Unohana, Yachiru, a.k.a. the first Kampachi, she's also kind of questionable as well as far as her role in the story. Yes, she trained Kampachi to become, uh, his, to unlock his true potential, but other than that, she didn't really have a major, major role in the entire arc. There's definitely other characters that they could have done besides Yachiru, and I know a lot of people are going to be mad that I said that, but um, that's the way I feel about it. I feel like... All 14 spots should be reserved for the characters that had the most significant roles in the final arc. Um, that's just the purest in me saying those words. But um, the choices that they did put out were decent and they were implemented very well. Uh, which brings me to the next point, guys. Are these manga characters all top tier? Now, if you look on the BraveSouls.fyi, which I highly recommend you check out because it's a great place to look at the stats and abilities of the characters. Um, the first round of manga characters, which was released about a year ago, uh, the four uh, captains, Sajin, Byakuya, Toshiro, and Shunsui, are now on page six in terms of average statistics. So page six is pretty far down, guys, um, for these characters to be. But I would still consider them in top as top-tier units. Uh, they've withstood the, the test of time. Uh, the other characters, they've come out with new characters since then. But the original four manga characters are still very viable, if not top tier. Which is saying quite a bit, guys. Now, I don't know how they managed to do that. Maybe it's because of the magnifiers on their damage. Maybe it's because of the mechanics of their strong attacks and things like that. But they all still work very well. They still do a lot of damage. And um, they've K-Lab has done a good job making most of the manga characters future-proof. So by future-proof, I mean, you know, are they going to become outdated eventually? And I'm sure eventually they will. But they've withstood the test of time so far, guys. It's been a year, and there have been dozens of characters released since that batch of uh, first initial batch of manga characters. And that batch of manga characters is still good. So I have to give uh, compliments to Caleb on um, you know managing the power creep. Yes, the newer manga characters probably do more damage and things like that. But um, as far as power creep goes, guys, they've done a great job keeping all the characters in the past year relevant. Uh, for the most part, uh, you know, even the characters that were slightly before Maga Round 1 are still very relevant, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, the Maga characters, they were intended, I think they were intended, I think, I gotta say that, they were intended to be the top tier units in the game, and I think K-Lab has done a good job making that a reality. So, as far as future proofing goes, Maga characters, they seem to be pretty bulletproof right now. But we'll have to see in the future how they age past this point. But uh, for now, they are definitely all, every single one is still relevant. Even pick Harry Yachiru, in my opinion. Now, what is going to happen to the game now that the most hype uh, event, the manga characters, is over? Uh, that is a huge question right now, guys. And I don't really have an answer for you. They've already announced that they're going to remake the Fulbring characters uh, at, after August. So maybe in September sometime. They didn't specify. So from this point on... Um, are we going to get any more manga characters at all? Now, guys, that totally depends on if the manga characters they put out were, uh, how do I say this, financially lucrative. Did they make money off the manga characters? Because at the end of the day, K-Lab is still a, a, a business and they're in, they're in it to make a profit. So if these characters didn't make them that profit, then it's highly doubtful that they would release more because uh, they'd have to go through that process of getting their rights from Shueisha or Shonen Jump. And uh, I'm sure that wasn't a cheap deal to, uh, to get done. So we have to look at, did BBS, did K-Lab make money off the manga characters? And from what I can tell, guys, uh, I can't see any financial data. Uh, I'd have to wait for the quarterly reports on their sales, you know, if I want to look at their, you know, their uh, stock or their shareholder uh, prospectus, whatever you call it, to see the actual figures. But... 
if you go off the Google Google Play Store and um, the downloads, they did get a lot of downloads when those banners re were released. Like when the manga characters came out, rounds one, two, three, and four, uh, Caleb did see a spike in their gross income. Uh, if I recall properly, you guys, BBS was uh, the number three uh, top grossing uh, action game for the Google Play Store when those banners were announced. I'm not sure if they went even higher than number three. I don't think so. But they were definitely up there, top five, you know, top three, uh, when these banners were announced. So people were definitely spending money on the game. The question is, how much of that money was actually profit? Because I'm sure there were some fees involved with getting the rights to that manga, that was the manga characters. So um, we don't know that information for sure. But the game was definitely more downloaded during the manga banners. They did see a higher gross income, uh, as you can tell by the Google Play rankings. Uh, it, like I said, it's the number three downloaded action game uh, during those banners. So I, I think they did make money. And um, I think that there is a potential for more manga characters. Maybe they could do a, you know, maybe they don't have to commit to 14 like they did the first time, but maybe, you know, a banner of three more or maybe five more or maybe two banners worth of characters would be a possibility. Uh, because there still are quite a number of manga characters that were left off the list. Uh, another possibility, guys, is, and this is kind of speculative on my part, is if the anime returns, then it's there's no limits on what characters Bleach Brave Souls can put into the game. Uh, because the rights that Caleb have, the rights that Caleb have are pertaining mostly to the anime. Um, any character that's in the anime, as far as I know, can be made a character in Bleach Brave Souls. So, the the future of manga characters in Bleach Brave Souls, I think it depends on if the anime returns. So, if the anime does not return, then we don't know what's gonna happen, guys, because there's still issues like casting for voice actors that I don't think K-Lab will have the permission to do themselves unless an anime returns, in which case that will be taken care of by uh, uh, Shueisha themselves. They'll cast all the people and then Caleb can just, um, you know, maybe negotiate the rights to get those voice actors to speak a few lines for the game. But I, Caleb, I guarantee you Caleb will not have permission to cast voices for characters like Basby or, or Hoshwald or anything like that or Zero Squad. Um, they, I, I just don't see it happening. It's never been something that's been done before as far as I know. So um, the future of manga characters in BBS is intimately tied to the future of the anime for Bleach. Um, we don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I don't even want to get into that subject of the anime returning. That is a topic for an entirely different video. So I'll just leave it as if we get the anime back, we get more BBS characters from Thousand Year Blood War. If not, then we don't know. Maybe we'll get a few more. Maybe Caleb can strike a random deal for a couple uh, because there are characters, like I said, that still need to be made into the game that could have been made in the first 14, but they chose to go with other options. Um, I guess that's all I have to say about it, guys. I think the characters, visually, they're all amazing. All of the special animations, you can tell that they put extra work into them. Um, the attack animations, their power levels, uh, their mechanics. Uh, you know, with very few exceptions, all of them are very viable. They're viable characters, they're fun to play. And uh, they were, I think they were a huge hit with the fans, other than some people getting left off the list. And others that, other than some very uh, elitist type gamers, you know, criticizing and nitpicking, you know, this character doesn't hit hard enough, or this character doesn't have a right soul trait or whatever. But other than that, guys, for the general player, the manga characters are amazing, in my opinion. So I guess we should bring up the ones that missed the boat. This is kind of a, kind of a gray area. Uh, it's totally a matter of opinion, but... There's characters like Aizen, who are huge fan favorites. Uh, there's characters like Mayuri that may not be as popular, but they were very integral to the Thousand Year Blood War arc. The fact that Mayuri did not get a character kind of blows my mind, guys. This, this captain did more during the Thousand Year Blood War arc than some of the other characters combined. Like Mayuri, you have to admit, he did more than Pink-Haired Yuchiru, he did more than Sajin, he definitely did more than Byakuya. And he did more for the, uh, for the Soul Reapers than, like I said, a lot of these characters all put together. So the fact that he didn't get 
he didn't get a manga version. Kind of, kind of bums me out a little bit. Also, the Yamamoto, Bankai Yamamoto, that's kind of not as big a deal to me because they came out with the one-armed Yamamoto, who is a top-tier unit to this day. Uh, the only thing he's missing is some kind of some of the Bankai specific, you know, maybe a special animation with his Bankai or uh, special attacks, strong attacks with his Bankai. But that version of Yamamoto is still very good. So that should be uh, enough for Yamamoto fans to be satisfied. He also has a tag team version now that's very powerful as well. So I don't think Yama has anything to worry about. Um, Aizen though, Aizen's another question entirely. He, wow, uh, the fact that he's one of the main people in Bleach, you know, he didn't actually do that much. Let's be honest, guys. He didn't actually have a huge role in the final battle or in the, uh, in the, in the events leading up to the final battle. Uh, he did manage to distort your watch's uh, future sense enough for Ichigo to strike a final blow. But um, as far as action-wise, guys, physical action, he really didn't. He really wasn't on screen that much. So maybe that's why Caleb did decided not to put him in the game. But then again, you see Aizen, the chair Aizen. He's now in the Shonen Jump game, uh, Jump Force, I believe, as a playable character. So um, obviously, the people that made Jump Force thought he was significant enough to put in their game. So I mean, I don't know why Caleb decided not to go with him. Like I said, I mean, there's only 14 spots, guys, so space is very limited. But on the other hand, they went with characters like Pinkeri Duchiru and Two Ichigos and Sajin and, you know, even Byakuya, even though I love Byakuya. Um, where, when, when Aizen might have been more popular than those characters and where Mayuri might have had a bigger role than those characters. So, yeah, I have to say they picked good characters. They picked the ones that pretty much everyone expected. Kisuke, Yoruichi, Toshiro, uh, Kenpachi, of course, uh, Rukia, Renji, Ichigo. Um, I'm surprised they didn't do an Uryu, because even though Uryu did not fight a lot, he did have one fight at the end against Hashwald, but we didn't get to see a lot of what he actually could do. But uh, he was pretty critical to the plot. Uh, he did have a major role, and you know, in an arc about Quincy's, I feel like you should have you know, maybe the main Quincy good guy of the story, Uryu, in the batch of 14 manga characters. You know, if I had it to do over, Aizen, Mayuri, and Uryu would definitely be in the batch of 14. Like, you could replace some of the characters I already mentioned with that. You know, maybe replace one of the Ichigos with Uryu. Maybe we replace uh, Pink Hair Jichiru with Mayuri. Maybe you replace Sajin or Byakuya with Aizen. So, I mean, there was a lot of, there was a lot of uh, potential for them to do other things, but, you know, the, the final batch they came out with I'm satisfied with it, you know, I, I, I did, like I said, I don't like the fact that there's two Ichigos, but B Ichigo being the main character, you know, he's an exception to every rule, so, uh, I, guess, I guess that's all I gotta say about it. Overall, I love the manga characters, I love the whole, the whole time, you know, the whole, uh, the hype about them, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of bummed out that it's over now, but who knows, guys, maybe we'll get more in the future, um, as far as, you know, what BBS is gonna do now, I, I'm thinking it's gonna be remakes, of other characters. Maybe there's some random characters here and there they could put into the game. Maybe there's like a new Nelio they could put in or something like that. But I'm foreseeing a lot of remakes, a lot of seasonal variants. Uh, there's still enough content, enough characters for them to keep going for the foreseeable future. Um, anyway guys, that's my thoughts on manga, the manga 14. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, what do you think? Is there going to be more manga characters? Can we rally up enough support for more manga characters? It all depends on money, guys, at the end of the day. You know, if it doesn't make money, we're not going to get more. Hopefully the anime will return as well, and we won't have to worry about this whole thing, like, either way. But uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I know it was a longer video, and it was just me talking, but I did want to get my final thoughts out there, and uh, hopefully you got something to think about. All right, thanks for watching once again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.